Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game. Welcome back to Kyoto Wins. Hakuoki Kyoto Wins, I should say. Uh, where we're doing Hachiro Iba's route. So, I'm very excited to do his route, because he's not part of the regular Shinsengumi guys. We meet him out and about <laughs> while we're on round with Toshi. So, we should try and get there ASAP. So, let's start with the first choice. We're going to be doing a lot of skipping again. Uh, I imagine we're going to be doing a lot of impressed Toshi stuff yet again, because uh, Eva is quite fond of Toshi, as are we all. So let's see, I need to run for it. Yep, definitely on the Toshi train so far. <laughs> Gotta be all spunky. Okay, and then we gotta make our truce. So, do, 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 do. Just gotta wait for everything to skip. I'm, um. Yeah, I'm curious how we're gonna involve Eva more in. with, all, like, all the affairs of everything that's going on. Because he came to visit. He comes to visit once. And otherwise, we never see him again. I guess because I, uh. I don't impress him enough when he comes to visit, <laughs> which is fair, totally fair. So hopefully he'll come by and visit more often if we impress him. Also, my mouse is on the screen again, sorry. It just likes to hang out. I really like that song, it's so pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna stay put in the room and have tea with Kondo. We're gonna have our conversation. Doo, doo, doo. Um, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> really? Also, we're gonna accompany Toshi on his rounds. We're actually gonna run into our old Dean Yamazaki. What a great route that was. Let's see where Eva falls on the on the list. I, I still haven't rethought my list at all. It's too difficult. These boys, they're all so wonderful. <laughs> so hard to pick. I'll just have to marry them all. Problem solved. <laughs> It'll be fine. We're gonna get there. It's amazing how much of the game we skip now. <laughs> now that we've done, like, so many of the routes. I guess we are winding down on routes, though, so... It is inevitable, I'm afraid. Um, oh, I do actually want to ask if I can help you. Alrighty. I'm sure Eva will appreciate that about us. All right, and are we getting our assignment finally? Yes, we are, okay. So I, I do have to go with Hijikata, and then I'll skip to the, like, past this meeting Yamazaki, sad face. All right. And then we go into that, is that a tea shop as well, or a restaurant or something? Something along those lines? Let's do this! Let's meet our boy! Okay, where to start? I asked customers that wandered in and out of the store, politely grabbing their attention. Unfortunately, it seemed like no one knew anything about my father's whereabouts. My tea became cold, the little leaf flakes sinking towards the bottom of the cup, and I sighed. <sighs> Alright! The Shinsengumi is here to conduct a search! Everyone remain calm. Who owns this place? I recognized the shouting man by his familiar core uniform as he barged into the shop. It was Takeda, the captain of the Shinsengumi's 5th Division. What could he be doing here? Excuse me, but I'm the owner of this store. What is the meaning of your business here? The owner's voice was trembling from being intimidated, and Takeda responded forcefully. 
I shouldn't even have to answer. It's been brought to my attention that you've been allowing Imperial Ronin extremists to conduct their business within these premises. What exactly are you plotting? If you do not give me an honest answer, I will be forced to take you to headquarters where you will be questioned. Please, don't be absurd. I would never do anything of the sort or let such people in and out of my store. Oh, uh -huh. so you're calling the Shinsengumi a bunch of liars then, are you? No, no, I'm not saying that. Sweat poured down the owner's face and he shook with fear. Takata glanced around the store with a sticky glare. I quickly ducked behind a shelf so he couldn't notice, so he wouldn't notice me. I managed to avoid detection as he scanned the store, then Takata approached the owner again. It is our best interest to allow local businesses to run as smoothly as possible, as you know. So, depending on how well you cooperate, perhaps I could make all of this disappear. You're implying... I'm merely suggesting that it would be in your interest to share some of your goodwill. As I peeked to get a closer view of their conversation, I could see the owner gulp. Although Takeda was not being explicit, it was definitely clear that he was soliciting a bribe from the shop owner. Th there's no way I could afford that, sir. I mean, there's nothing suspicious going on here. What's that? You're refusing to help the Shinsengumi, protectors of Kyoto's safety? No, I would never do such a thing. I'm going to take you to the headquarters. You must be a Ronin sympathizer, and I'm going to take you back and make you spill your guts. No, no! Oh no, I was sick to my stomach hearing him. Just when I was about to speak out, someone placed their hand on my shoulder. This beautiful boy! Shh, don't. A girl should not get involved in such a dangerous situation. This man will not hesitate to hurt you, and it will be grave. Wow, so forward. This mysterious samurai whispered gently into my ear, but I became completely distracted by his perfectly sculpted facial features. <laughs> I completely forgot how distracted she was by him. She's like, he's so beautiful. His skin looked incredibly fair and soft, and he was almost as gorgeous as Hijikata. For a second, I thought he was an actor. He was dressed in expensive, exotic-looking fabrics, leading me to believe he was famous. Uh, um... Don't worry. Just leave this to me. The softness of his voice enveloped me in a great calm, and I sat back down to let him proceed. Go on. But... I hoped he'd be okay. Takada was massive, and his short temper seemed like a recipe for disaster if anyone crossed him. I can't imagine dealing with such a violent soul. You were just about to call him out in front of the entire store. <laughs> Little woman. Excuse me. May I say something? You're with the Shinsengumi, right? Takeda turned to face this man, staring in disbelief that someone would approach him in such a manner. So, what is it to you? The owner of the shop clearly stated he isn't allowing any Imperial extremists to solicit here. So, with what charges do you intend on taking him back to your headquarters, hmm? What? How dare you question me like this? You're one of those Imperial extremists, aren't you? I should have known you'd turn up eventually. The mysterious samurai, uh, or samurai, <laughs> smiled coolly and he responded calmly. So, just because I question you, I'm an extremist. I guess a fair investigation is out of the question. Well, you are preventing me from inflicting justice, which is just enough proof. Very well, then. If things are going to escalate, I wouldn't want to upset the lady here. Would you mind handi handling our business outside? Huh. You sound afraid of getting your pretty face all bloodied up. Not surprising. Takada huffed smugly to himself and waddled out of the store to challenge the samurai. Uh, I forgot all about that. Takada's smirk remained on his face as the two met each other outside of the store. He assumed an offensive stance and then reached for his katana to threaten him, 
or not. Huh? As soon as Takada moved his hand to unsheath, the samurai intercepted to cover the sword's mouth. L let go! Or else I will- Oh, don't tell me you really thought you were going to draw your sword, were you? If you were, then things between you and me are going to get serious. And I'm not sure you're ready for things to get serious. The samurai possessed a duality. One side was a soft-spoken gentleman, the other side a warrior. Takeda sensed this duality as well because after the samurai made his claim, he made no movement. Before we knew it, people gathered around the store, murmuring amongst themselves and echoing the general sentiment of confusion and wonder. The Mibu wolves are having a duel? Are they causing trouble again? Such murmurs caught my ear as I looked ahead. Seems like we're drawing some attention. Do you still plan on drawing your sword? The samurai seem to already know the answer. <laughs> Takada began to grit his teeth angrily, and he gruffly shook off the samurai's hand. I never forget a face, you bastard. I will make you live to regret this day. His face was flushed with red, and he swiftly exited and disappeared from the store. As the tensions deflated, I exhaled in relief that things didn't come to violence. Whew. Phew, I'm glad that's over. That could have become ugly. Let's go back inside and check on our friend. Uh, um, were you okay? Yes, that was nothing. I'm so glad. Why were you willing to risk your life against that man? You didn't have to stop me back there. The samurai slightly paused, then answered timidly. You reminded me of someone from my past. I was perplexed. Me? Yes. Aw, oh, you even blush just like her. He studied my face carefully, his eyes dotting up and down my small face. Although I liked the attention, I still had no clue who this person was or where he was from. Um, I'm sorry. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. I bowed lightly to him, and he looked a little taken aback. Oh, don't worry. It seems that I am simply mistaken. My apologies. Please, let's return to the tea shop. Your tea and snacks must be ruined by now. Uh, um... The samurai's kind demeanor was nearly impossible to resist, drawing me to return to the store as if I'd caught the scent of the city's sweetest bun. <laughs> That's the name of the episode. <laughs> Hachiro Iba, the city's sweetest bun. <laughs> or buns, winku. Upon entering the tea shop, owner smiled and brought us freshly brewed tea. Ah, oh, was it you who poured our fresh tea? There's even some sweet bean jelly here. Sitting beside our tea was a neatly arranged platter of sweet bean jelly. Yes, thank you so much for helping me. You've saved me. Oh, please. I didn't do anything to deserve such kindness. Thank you so much, though. I love sweets. The pleasure is mine. Don't be shy. Have as much as you would like. Take your time. The owner seemed to bow after every sentence and then returned to tend to his counter. What a generous gesture. Would you like some of my sweet bean jelly? Uh, oh no, I think the owner means for you to eat all of this. If you say so. Time to dig in. He cut the sweet bean jelly into elegantly sliced halves, and he expressed delight after each bite. In my experience so far, Samurai didn't ever seem to smile often, but... Every time he took a bite, he grinned like a child, smiling as if he was the happiest person alive. It wouldn't be too much of a stretch, maybe, to guess that he and I were close in age. As this thought came to mind... I could still hear customers murmuring, whispering amongst themselves and to each other. Did that samurai scare away the Mibu wolf? Looks like it. Maybe there are some good samurai after all, huh? He can't be a samurai. He's too handsome. He's got some quick hands, though. <laughs> you know what that means. The samurai seemed to overhear their discussion, timidly retreating from his initial enthusiasm. As soon as he finished drinking his tea... 
Please excuse me. It's time for me to pay my tab. He rushed to get up, but not before slipping me some last words. I'll be on my way now. Please, do be careful and try to avoid trouble, okay? Oh. The samurai fled the store, almost like a dream wisping around one's mind after awaking. He almost gave me no opportunity to thank him properly for earlier. I rushed after the samurai. Hold up! Wait! I chased after him, yelling to catch his attention. Is something the matter? Thank you so much for earlier. You saved me. I didn't do anything to warrant a thanks. He turned away from me, stopping to gaze at the clouds swirling above us. However, it seems like the Shinsengumi's name is dragged through the dirt. If today's incident is any indication, then I can't blame people for having their reservations. Well... Let's do this, this time. I hope he doesn't think Takada's behavior is an example of how all Shinsengumi captains act. Hijikata and Inoue are both honorable men. <clears throat> Each one of the captains I've come to know are, in fact, kind and good-hearted. Not like Takada. <laughs> the giant waddling man that he is. Just a second. <clears throat> Sorry, I had a rough voice there. It was difficult, though, to deny the unrest felt by both the samurai and the tea shop goers. I'm sorry. Why do you keep apologizing? It's not like you're a part of that man's group, right? Well... Although the samurai showed me kindness, I wasn't sure if I could trust him with the truth. In that moment, he picked up on my subtle cue, displaying a reserved silence as if he knew. Hey! Alright. You seem to have your hands full at the moment. I won't press the subject any further. There was a pause in our conversation, and the wind whistled softly in the background. The samurai didn't break his concentration, staring intently into my face. His eyes seemed to be searching for something, perhaps a faint glimmer of a long-lost memory. Um... If only he could tell me what seemed to be on the tip of his tongue, but he shut his eyes and turned. Well, I'll be on my way now. Oh, sorry for stopping you. Don't worry about it. I'm glad I got to see you, Chizuru. Huh? How did he know my name? Who was this man? The samurai turned his back to me and departed. He wasn't familiar to me. Was I to him? I didn't have much time to consider what any of this meant because Hichikata returned shortly after. Did I make you wait for long? How was it? Did you obtain any information on Kodo? Hichikata... I quietly shook my head in response. I see. Well, it's not like people around here are willing to talk easily. Don't think much of it. Okay. As we walked back towards the headquarters, I filled Hijikata in on the earlier proceedings. Takada did what? Somehow he was able to contain a palpable rage without lashing out at me. Don't tell anyone what you saw today. I mean no one. Not even the captains to whom I know you confide. Do I make myself clear? His voice was stern, and I quietly nodded. This doesn't need to be said, but don't ever let your guard down, especially in front of people you do not recognize. The Shinsengumi has to protect its secrets, sometimes even from its own members. Most of all from that buffoon Takada who knows nothing. I understand. Once Hijikata was convinced of my understanding, he probed more questions. You mentioned a mysterious samurai came to your aid. Please elaborate. Oh, I forgot to ask his name. What? How the hell am I supposed to thank him? I, I don't know! It all happened so fast! Well, fine. If you happen to cross paths again, be sure to ask him for his name. He curtly muttered and left me with his last slot. Despite everything, I'm sorry to hear no news of your father came to light. Hopefully Saito or Shinpachi had better luck than you. 
Yes, hopefully. Ah oh, yes, I've forgotten that I accomplished absolutely nothing I wanted to today. We rush back to the base. Once back at headquarters, we discover the sightings of my father at Tarada Inn was false, crushing the sliv uh, yeah, sliver of happiness I'd held on to. Not the silver of happiness. Okay. We're done chapter one! <laughs> Let's see how much uh, blooming we got after that... Uh... One butterfly on moon event. All right, pretty quiet. Um, is it that one? Yes. Ah, uh, there you are. We're budding. Okay. That works for me. Well, we can skip for a while. Uh, so do I need to go out or stay? It probably doesn't matter. Uh, okay. I need to stay. I will follow the notes that I have. Okay. So we're gonna skip quite a bit. Well, we get to spend some time with Yamazaki again. That's nice. And this boy. <laughs> Sada! I think it's after the Aketa in incident that, uh, um, Iba, Hachiro, uh, comes by to visit again. So that'll be good. Let's just get through this as quickly as we can. Uh, but why me? Avoid those butterflies on moons as much as we can. Um, okay, so Yamazaki, you should go. I'm gonna be dumb again. <laughs> Sorry, Yamazaki. I still love you, though. Okay, and then we're gonna stay with Hijikata. Watch him be awesome. do 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 All right, let me get the recap of what happened. And... It might be the very next scene. Let's see. It's July. Either way. If I hear sweeping, it's a good sign. End of July, 1864. Weeks pass since the Battle of the Aketa Inn. In the meantime, the Shinsengumi grew stricter during their rounds to arrest the numerous outlaw ronin that escaped from the Aketa Inn. Rumors surfaced of extremists who were plotting to exact revenge on the Shinsengumi. Additionally, there were also problems occurring with warriors spanning from other domains, making things tense around the headquarters. Things were finally settling down. As a result of my efforts during the battle, they grew more encouraging of my involvement. The Shinsengumi allowed me to sweep the area in front of the headquarters on my own. One day, I was cleaning the courtyard with a broom when I heard gentle footsteps approaching me. Excuse me, but is this the Shinsengumi headquarters? Oh, yes! The voice came from behind me, so I was caught off guard when answering. Didn't I meet you the other day? You look familiar. Oh, hello. It's been a while since the tea shop. I met him on the first day I was allowed to leave the Shinsengumi compound. This was the mysterious samurai that helped me while I awaited Hichikata's return at the tea shop. Why, yes! I appreciate your help the other day. No problem. I mean, as I told you then, the pleasure was all mine. In any case, I'm glad to see that you seem to be doing well, Chizuru. Now that I remember it, this man called me by my name when I encountered him. But I never learned his name. I remembered Hijikata scolded me for not knowing his name, so I brought up the question. 
Um, I'm so sorry for never asking your name despite you saving me. Is it alright if I get your name? Aw, oh, poor guy's like she doesn't remember me. I've only thought of her every day since we parted. His eyes twinkled kindly before he spoke, and I sensed a faint melancholy in his voice. I am... Hachiro Iba. Ah, Hachiro Iba. What a pretty name. I have to tell Hijikata later. So, how may I help you today, Iba? Oh, well... Iba kept stealing a glance towards the base. I assumed his business was, was with the Shinsengumi. When I first met him, Iba defended a tea shopkeeper from Takeda. In this encounter, Takeda proudly declared himself as a warrior of the Shinsengumi. I slightly suspected Iba intended to visit and inform the leaders about the incident. Hijikata showed up suddenly, as if he telepathically knew I was speaking to someone. Oh, Hijikata! This man is... Before I could finish my sentence, the man ran towards Hijikata. Oh, I knew it! Toshi! It's me, Hachiro. Long time no see. Y your Wait, Hachiro? What the hell are you doing here? When Hijikata realized who it was, his eyes grew wide. <laughs> are you surprised? I visited Kyoto with Shogunate orders. Forget about me. Ma'am, so it really was you connected to the Shinsengumi. I couldn't believe it until I made sure for myself. Congratulations. You really did become a samurai. Aw, oh, come on, don't mock me. I mean, we're treated no better than any ronin. Yes, but your dream of becoming a samurai came true. Hey, I said don't mock me! Oh, come now. The Shin Sengumi are famous in Edo. You are so feared that even crying children go hush. I heard about your victory at the Aketa Inn. It would seem you lot are flourishing. Hmm. <laughs> Well, we're working on it. How very unlike himself. Hijikata seemed to be flustered and his cheeks were rosy. Their rapport suggests they've known each other for some time. Were they good friends? I still needed to tell Hijikata that Iba was the samurai who came to my aid at the tea shop. Once I verified their conversation had come to a halt, I mustered the courage to speak to Hijikata. Um, Hijikata... This was the young gentleman who helped me from Takeda the other day at the tea house. Hijikata furrowed his eyebrows. Oh, I see. Sorry for her causing trouble. Well, rather, I guess you saw something you shouldn't have seen. I just happened to pass by. Besides, I was there for a personal reason, so I didn't report it to anyone. Oh, well, thanks for that. Hey, we don't need to have this conversation out in the sun. Why don't you come inside? Hijikata looked uncomfortable offering anyone any sort of kindness, but he looked at Iba warmly. I took tea to the two in the hall. Hijikata told me to remain there, so I decided to listen in. So, you claimed you came to Kyoto with Shogunate orders. What are you here for? I'm currently in Okazume. In Okazume? I listened intently, but subtly, since I was unfamiliar with the contents of their conversation. He's a Hatamoto of the Shogunate. He is entrusted with protecting the Shogun and his guests and friends who surround him. Oh wow! I am honored to meet such a man. Oh please, I am nothing special. This was a job I acquired from connections with my father. But, but what would bring a man of his stature here, Hijikata? This meant Iba was someone who worked directly with the Shogun. What an honor. It made no sense why he would interact with the Shinsengumi, or why he had business with us. Oh, I see what you're thinking. You're thinking, why would he know a guy like me, huh? I did my best to nod without offending him. You see, not only is this gentleman a Hamamoto, but he's heir to the Shingyoto Ryu Iba Dojo, which is one of the top dojos in Edo. The Iba Dojo and my dojo socialized often, so this is how we came to know each other. Yes, that's right. When I got word that I would be coming to Kyoto, I was excited because I know I would see Toshi. 
Iba's eyes shined with adoration, but Hichikata scoffed and rolled his eyes. Huh. <laughs> Whatever. Just keep in mind, Kyoto isn't exactly a vacation destination. Yes, I'll keep that in mind. However, despite it being so dangerous, it seems even a woman can be with the Shinsengumi. Iba glanced at me when he asked his question before looking to Hijikata. Uh... I gasped and cupped my hands over my mouth and Hijikata's eyes darted toward me sternly. It would seem Iba picked up on the fact I was female, judging by their interaction. Oh, was that supposed to be a secret? I didn't want to confirm any answers, so I stared towards the mat underneath without speaking. It wasn't difficult to tell that she's a girl the moment you set your eyes on her. It's not her fault. I know. I mean, only a fool couldn't figure it out. Hejikata looked resigned towards Eva and sighed. Ugh. Well, her reasons for being here are somewhat complicated, so we have her pose as a man for now. Only a portion of the men in the Shinsengumi know about her. So it would be preferred if you were to keep it under wraps in front of our men. Understood. Would it be too much to ask about her reasons? Her father is missing, so we're allowing her to cooperate with our investigation. Her father is missing? You're talking about Koto Yukimura. How did he know everything? When he mentioned my father's name, the hairs on my neck stood up. How do you know my father's name? I guess Hijikata was also shocked by his knowledge, and he looked dubiously towards Eva. Wait a minute. How do you know her father is Kodo? Well, I visited the Yukimura Clinic a long time ago. Chizuru, do you not remember me? Eva asked timidly, and it finally clicked for me. If Iba had visited my father's clinic, then that, that explains why he would have known my name and my father. No matter how hard I tried, however, I couldn't recall his face or name from memory, so I will be honest about it this time. Um, I'm really sorry for not remembering you. Iba's expression seemed a little disappointed by my response. Well, I guess it's natural that you wouldn't remember. We were little. <laughs> Even though I remember. Sad face. Oh, and not just like that? That's all you needed? But I remember you now! <laughs> Thanks. It's nice to meet you again. Yes! His smile was so contagious. I couldn't help myself from smiling in response. Oh, did she just mean, like, I remember you from uh, the tea shop the other day? <laughs> Uh, hey, why are you saying you remember him now? Don't lie to him, he's our guest. Oh, stop it. I'll make sure we see more of each other in the near future so she doesn't forget. What? What are you talking about? You don't have to keep coming back here. Aw, oh, don't be like that. Come on, we are both from Edo. We're buddies. Eva drew Hijikata in closer in a jovial manner, and Hijikata blushed at the notion. Hijikata is normally really uptight, so seeing him behave this way was startling. I had a lingering suspicion that Hijikata was actually... enjoying himself. All of the commotion must have alerted the captains because they popped up from nowhere. Oh, what the hell? Hajiro, is that you? I knew I heard your voice somewhere. It really was you, huh? Shinpachi, Harada... Everyone else is here, too. Long time no see, boys. Man, you're in Kyoto, too? Are you here to train, or are you sightseeing? Don't be stupid. I'll bet you he's here to protect someone important or something, am I right? Well, maybe it's something like that. If you're in Kyoto, I assume you have a pretty good position. Eva nodded plainly in response. I see. You're in Kyoto too, huh? Well, be careful. Don't be stupid and die or something. Thank you for the warning. I'll keep that in mind. Hey, we should go drinking someday! I mean, we could go now if you want. 
Each of the captains surrounded Eva and exchanged words. Most of all, Eva seemed lost in the amount of fun he had while conversing with everyone. I guess he really knew everyone back in Edo. Hichikata watched their interaction with warmth in his eyes and muttered. See, despite him being a Hatamoto, and also the heir of the Eva Dojo, he chose to learn about each and every one of us, and he treats us with respect. It seems no one can escape his amiable nature. He seemed to be especially fond of Hijikata, though. But I couldn't dare say that. Well, I guess you can say we're friends. Whenever he visits, be sure to let him in. Understood. Will do. Before we knew it, evening had come and Eva told us it was time for him to depart. When I return to Edo, I'll be sure to ask around about Kodo. Very well. Be sure it is kept under wraps. Got it. I won't tell anyone. As we exchanged goodbyes, the warriors returned from their afternoon rounds. One of them seemed to take notice of us, and he rushed over while shouting. You! You're that bastard from the other day! What the hell are you doing here? It was Takeda, glaring at Iba angrily and demanding answers. I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't think we've been acquainted yet. Do you dare mock me? You! Name yourself! I am an Okazume of the Obanchi, protector of the Shogun in the realm, Hachiro Iba. A Shogunate protector? Of the realm? Iba? Wait, from the Iba Dojo? Yes, I've been here on official business in Kyoto. In the meantime, I've come to visit my old friends from Shie Hall to pay my respects. Don't lie! This visit is not for idle pleasantries! You're here to spread lies about the other day! I have strictly come to pay my respects. Or would you rather me remind you what happened during the so-called other day? <sighs> Eva's eyes sharpened directly at Takeda, and the latter stopped his pacing and deepened his voice. What, whatever you say, then we're settled. Looks like I'll be on my way, then. Takeda, Takeda, Takeda seemingly snapped into shape, speaking with a semblance of respect before storming off. Eva seemed relaxed despite everything. Everyone silently stood still, and I was afraid of another incident, so I sighed once Takeda left. Huh. Toshi, who is that man? He's Kanryusai Takeda, the captain of the 5th Division. Yukimura told me about the other day. Sorry about that. I'll make sure he doesn't bother you any further. I'm fine, but... Please, watch over her. I think if he finds out she was there, it will not end well. Okay, got it. Alright then, Chizuru. I'll drop by again soon, okay? Oh. Did he mean he's coming to see me? Did he just mean he was visiting the headquarters? I couldn't respond since I was unsure, and Iba smiled to me with his twinkling eyes. His face seemed reluctant, if not a little forlorn, and he left the compound. I stared at him as he walked into the distance, until his small figure was removed from my eyes. Iba was a mysterious person. Even if he was someone very important and upper class, he acted with integrity and kindness, commanding a lot of respect from the captains of the Shinsengumi. I did not think there was a samurai like him in the shogunate.